<laughs> All right, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, and we are talking about an over-the-top beautiful day here on planet Earth. Here on planet Earth, a spectacularly gorgeous day here in Doomsday Trailer, Monday, April 22nd, 2024, and it is unbelievably good luck because it is our Good News Monday, but it's not just any Monday. It is Earth Day 2024, the Earth is Fucked Day 2024, and as I've pointed out a couple of times, just in case anyone doesn't realize this, you do understand, guys, that the Earth is more fucked today than it has been in 65 million years. Okay, today is the most fucked this planet has been in 65 million years, but it's not as fucked as it's going to be tomorrow. So we're going to, uh, we're going to have a good news Monday. We're going, we're going to go over here to the mainstream media today and, uh, and we're going to get some happy news. We're going to put on a happy face. But before that, um, we get into that, speaking of happy faces, I have an email. I have an email from none other than Al Gore. Al Gore is on my, uh, on my personal email list. And uh, so Yahoo Mail wants to uh, know why I am receiving a message from Al Gore. There's... Why is this message from Al Gore in your mailbox? Do you want us to dump it into spam? Alright. But, uh... Al Gore is inspired today. I want to share that I am truly inspired by the groundswell of support that I have seen from our global community of activists. It makes a real difference for our efforts to solve the climate crisis. And, and, and guys, it goes without saying, obviously. I am guessing that 98%, 98% of the Earth Day shit in the mainstream media is about climate change in general and carbon emissions in particular. 98% of Earth Day now is about one tiny, tiny little band of why this, why this planet is more fucked today than it's been in 65 million years. The, you take everything else fucking this planet on Earth Day today, put it all together in the mainstream media, and you might find a little sliver, and I actually found some, and uh, we, 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 believe it or not, it, it, it took an electron microscope and a team of bloodhounds, but I actually found a little bit of intelligent commentary, but we'll get to that in a minute because, of course, I just have to share a couple of these. So according to Al Gore today, from putting a stop to new and existing fossil fuel projects, uh, from putting a stop to new and existing fossil fuel pro uh, projects, I maybe Al Gore gets different emails than I get, but I understood that the U.S. is pumping more oil right now, right now, today. Earth Day 2024 than at any time in human history. And there's something about a willow project and, uh, and I was reading about some 10 billion barrel uh, oil find over there in sub-Saharan Africa. Putting a stop to new and existing fossil fuel projects to demanding greater accountability from international decision makers climate reality you know Al Gore's group is called climate reality 
according to his climate reality, they're putting a stop to new and existing fossil fuel projects. Climate reality is moving the needle on the climate action we need for a livable future. Of course, he, he doesn't say which way the needle is being moved, but I think we're going to hear from Al again uh, in this one, and this is from USA Today. So who, anybody who heard my, uh, my rant yesterday from the good old New York Times, which I guess was their nod to work day, this is USA Today kind of parroting the New York Times. For Earth Day 2024, today, experts, experts are spreading optimism, not doom. There you go. And here is why, and uh, we will get to one of the, uh, the, uh, the, the great sentences I have ever read about doomers in the mainstream media is coming up, and I probably used it for the title. This, 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 this quote from the mainstream media, it, we have reached a new level of Orwellian doublespeak that I have ever encountered in 15 years of being a doomer. That the, the, this assault on on doom on doomers has it, it has reached new territory in USA Today on Earth Day. But we'll get to the quote in a minute. Take it away, USA Today. Climate change may still be an existential threat to humanity. So you understand the first two words in the story are climate change. And so 99.9% .9 of this story is about climate change, completely ignoring all of the more serious, immediate existential threats to humanity uh, and the rest of the planet. And of course, they've already established that climate change is the existential threat to humans. No mention, and they're, they're, they're halfway through the, the first fucking sentence to this. But as Earth Day 2024 rolls around today, some of the people most concerned about the planet are not peddling doom, they're spreading optimism on the day that the earth is the most fucked it has been in 65 million years. There's plenty to feel good about. They, they say, the experts say, huge strides toward fighting climate change. Decades of work that have led to other environmental disasters being averted. And the reality, the reality, the the reality, the the reality, the reality that that help can help fuel the actions needed to keep tra tackling to keep tackling the climate crisis and take a wild guess for the first expert. Uh, that they mentioned. This is the newest darling of the clueless fucking moron limp dick lefties. Uh, this clueless bitch, I'm assuming she's a breeder, she's got to be a breeder. Uh, Hannah Ritchie. Hannah Ritchie has uh, unseated Michael Mann and Bill McKibben as being the single biggest uh, hopium peddler uh, on the planet. You know, she's trying to sell her new book and uh, she has figured out how to get interviewed by all of these mainstream media lapdogs. <clears throat> Take it away, Hannah. People assume that in the 50 years since the first Earth Day, we have made no progress that we're in a worse position now than we were in the 1970s, that there's no point to environmental action. Yes, quite the opposite is true. 
climate-friendly advances that would have seemed impossible just 10 years ago are now commonplace. And three times in the past 50 years, humanity has faced and fixed massive man-made global environmental issues. And this Earth Day, today, some, some climate scientists think climate change could be added to that list. That reality is still a long way off. Ha! Uh, that reality is still a long way off. But we have made more progress than you might think. It's as if humanity has to climb the world's tallest mountain, said Catherine Hey Ho, chief scientist at the Nature Conservancy. Yes, and a distinguished professor of climate science at Texas Tech University. The, the very term Texas Tech has always uh, tickled my funny bone. All right, wind and solar power. And don't forget heat pumps, electric cars. Uh, Monday brings even more funding for climate friendly causes. Yes. Said, hey ho, it's like climbing the world's tallest mountain. You walk and you walk and you climb and you climb and the top seems like it's never getting closer. Yes, but when you turn around and fall on your ass, you realize how far you've come. Close quote. All right. I figured Al Gore would show up here. Even Al Gore, even Al Gore, <clears throat> who famously began warning Americans about global warming in 1981, feels a little bit positive. Yes. He acknowledged that things aren't moving fast enough. Damn it! But, but he said, quote, we are gaining on this. We are gaining momentum and soon we will be gaining on the crisis itself. Close quote. The crisis, of course, being, uh, uh, being uh, fossil fuels. Okay, then they, then they trot out the, 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 the shit we've heard over and over uh, about DDT, uh, uh, about the ozone layer and acid rain. Okay, we have fixed those. Fix those. So, there you go. We fixed DDT, we patched up that ozone hole, and we have cured acid rain so there you go. Why can't we just do the rest of it? And global CO2 emissions could peak next year. Yes. All right. And certain, certainly by 2030. Uh-huh. That means 2023 was very likely the year with the highest greenhouse gas emissions ever and the numbers will only go down from here. I, I, I wish uh, Al Gore, Catherine, hey ho, and uh, that, that, that clueless moron, Richie, if, uh, I will gladly bet any one of those clueless morons $1,000 that 2023 did not see the highest CO2 emissions. This is unadulterated horseshit. Flat out unadulterated horseshit. But you notice how they cover their bases by saying more likely 2030 is when they're going to peak. Yes. 
Okay, then of course they're talking about clean energy. Clean energy. Yes. Anyway, guys, I, I'm just skipping through all most of this. I want to get to this quote. Uh, where is this quote? Come on. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, let's get down to the ha ha ha. There is ha ha. There is ha 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 ha. There is hope on the horizon. Hope on the horizon. Yes. Back to uh, Ms. Ritchie. Says the work necessary to fix climate change can seem overwhelming, but it's actually not as bad as it might seem. Quote, the solutions overlap so in tackling one problem, you're making others better at the same time, she said. Uh, now this next quote is not coming from uh, Richie. It's coming from the mainstream media. I wish to, I really wish this was a direct quote out of her, out of Hannah Richie's mouth, but it's uh, but but it's all wrapped into their interview with uh, so so I'm thinking this is a mainstream media lapdog paraphrasing uh, Hannah Ritchie, but unfortunately I can't put quote marks around it as much as I wish I could. But anyway, directly from USA Today. Uh, we have a new, uh, a, a new level has been reached in Doomer bashing. Keeping this front and center, meaning the hubba, keeping the hubba, the hubba, the hubba, the hubba, on the horizon, front and center, can be hard. The same voices, the same voices that have been denying climate change for decades now have added what's known as doomerism to their toolbox saying it is too late and there is no it's too late and there is no no so anyway guys uh, I, I understand what's being said here. I, I, I had to read this a couple of times. So what they are claiming is that it is climate change deniers. That doomers saying we're fucked. We are, and this is, this is quoting USA Today, we are the same voices that have been denying climate change for decades now are doomers. So uh, this is the, the mainstream media training people to uh, hear a doomer and say, oh, they're part of, uh, you know, the Alex Jones gang. They're part of, you know, they must be Donald Trump voters that doomers or Donald Trump voters that we think climate change is a hoax. We need to start talking about collapse deniers like Hannah Ritchie and Al Gore and uh, Catherine Hey Ho. I, 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 anyway, th this is, th this might be the, the j just flat out unadulterated horseshit. Uh, even those who are overwhelmed by climate change can be frozen into inaction. We have said, said, hey ho, we have people who are so panicked ah, that they descend into this very unhelpful <coughs> doomer. Ah! 
Meanwhile, Al Gore is among those in awe of the progress humanity has made. Yes. Anyway, I, I'm not, we've already heard from Al Gore. So, uh, how many comments on a planet of 8 billion people do you think that tsunami of horseshit got on Earth Day from a planet of 8? Uh, I would like to report zero, but no. Uh, someone calling himself dot, dot, dot says, it has, it is difficult to find her. It is difficult to find her, 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 her at times. Yes. Okay, now this next one, I, I think it's just a coincidence it's showing up here on Earth Day. This is from Yahoo Finance on Earth Day. The world is not as messed up as you might think. The world is not as messed up as now. Now this is from the finance desk. We live in perilous times, right? Wars threaten, chaos abounds, and doom, doom lurks. Doom lurks. Actually, no. We live in more or less normal times, even if the daily news makes it seem like apocalypse is always just around the corner. In fact, there is a remarkable amount of stability that keeps economies chugging along and living standards intact. And uh, so what they're talking about here so they're going through kind of the, the economic uh, version of the, the climate change version. We just heard a, you know, poo-pooing all of those uh, e economic disaster uh, doomers and all of that shit. Uh, let's see, I, I like this. Uh, towards the end, uh, come on, alright, as a, this is an economist talking, showing an example of why we are not fucked. <clears throat> The United States has become the world's top oil and natural gas producer. There you go. That's all you need to know. What else do you need to know? Uh, if you want to buck the trend and believe everything might just be okay, the evidence will back you up, and, 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 and of course, okay, let, let's suspend disbelief here and assume everything in this uh, little rosy picture about uh, the American and the global e uh, economy is completely true, uh, that everything is just rosy in the global, if, if you can go that far, then of course there's the little inconvenient truth that uh, you better believe Al Gore is not going to point out this inconvenient truth that the healthier the economy the more fucked the planet. Every single indicator that is good for the economy and economic growth and America pumping more fossil fuels then at any point in human history, everything that is good news for humans is, uh, is bad news for every other single uh, earthling on the planet, 
but at least we did not have to hear from fucking Catherine Hey Ho, uh, Hannah Ritchie, or Al Gore in, in this. We, we didn't have to hear the fucking uh, term climate change never appeared in this article. Carbon pollution uh, never appeared in this article, and that alone uh, it was a great breath of fresh air. But anyway, guys, I actually, uh, I mean, I could go on with this, but I actually found some, uh, some somewhat uh, intelligent reporting in the middle of all of this bullshit. Uh, we have the Earth Day 2024 report card uh, from good old ABC News. Uh, you know, talking about uh, the triple planetary uh, crisis that we that you're going to start hearing about. Quoting one of these, where you actually hear two other crises. Quote, the Global Earth Observations Community has characterized a triple planetary crisis of interconnecting stressors. Of course, they're going to put climate change at the beginning, biodiversity loss, and pollution. Uh, I don't know who this uh, person they're talking about. Somebody Burkett. Uh... Dr. Virginia Burkett, Chief Scientist for Climate and Land Use uh, Change at the U.S. Geological Survey. Quote, collectively, the interconnected effects of human activity pose significant challenges for human security and, of course, sustainable development. Do you think so? Uh, greenhouse gases are now more abundant in the Earth's atmosphere than at any time in the uh, last 800,000 years. Uh, obviously, we, they go through all of this shit. Uh, here is... Uh, Anyway, another one of these uh, these planet huggers quote the predominant way we currently consume, extract, exploit, produce, and pollute will exacerbate the climate crisis. Uh, but anyway, so how are we going? So all we have to do, but don't worry. Uh, so what are the steps necessary that we need to take to save this planet from climate change? Number one, of course, as I talked about, we we're talking about that clueless moron uh, Zeke Housefather yesterday, decarbonizing America is the number one thing we do. We just simply need to decarbonize America and as I said yesterday, if we were able to do that, it would make no difference. One more time, how many times? For the second time in 24 hours, if we completely decarbonized this economy, it would make zero difference in saving this planet. Completely irrelevant. Okay, to it is killing one of the termites in the colony. Okay, decarbonizing the economy is squishing one one termite in the colony of termites eating your house. Of course, subsidizing electric vehicles, which means you know let taxpayers foot the bill for all of that mining, and, and good luck on this one. How about depoliticizing climate change? There you go. We're going to depoliticize. Uh, and then, of course, don't forget, uh, we, we, we need a little bit of that corporate 
responsibility, corporate responsibility, right up there with sustainable development uh, as the oxymoron. All right, we have Earth Day. It's almost too late. Uh, I thought we were going to see the the window of opportunity uh, in that much shockingly there was no rapidly closing uh, window of opportunity but I got a lot this is from Parade Magazine shockingly uh, 25 Earth Day facts now it, it is a mixed bag uh, but we're going to, it just talks about the history, uh, oh, okay, but this is just a few of the 25 facts. The theme for this year's Earth Day is planet versus plastics. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, all right, since the first Earth Day, average annual temperatures in the contiguous U.S. have been warming at a rate of 0 0.45 degrees Fahrenheit per decade. Here is a fact. Humans today use about 50% more natural resources than we did just 30 years ago. Here's a little fact from Parade Magazine. Animal species population saw an overall decline of 60% worldwide between 1970 and 2014. So, of course, that's gotten, I don't know why they don't update this. They're still talking about this shit from 10 years ago due to habitat loss, pollution, climate change, and other factors. Uh, then, of course, 20 of the warmest years on record worldwide have occurred in the past 22 years. Here's a fact. Scientists estimate that dozens of plant and animal species go extinct every day due to human activity. They, you know, they always, they, they, I like when they say human activity instead of saying humans. Uh, here's a fact. Rising global temperatures are leading to more extreme weather events including more intense wildfires and more frequent high intensity hurricanes. All right. How about I do not believe it. We have a fact. The well, we'll see about this fact. The world's population is expected to increase to 9 billion by 2050, which will only increase the impact of human activity, otherwise known as humans, on the environment. Uh, here's a fact. Uh, today's average American generates about four and a half pounds of trash every day compared to 2.6 pounds in 1960. Uh, here's a fact. Food accounts for 10 to 30 percent of a household's carbon footprint. Here's a, uh, let's see, uh, let's, uh, one more on planet versus plastic. We will close with the fact nearly 80% of all plastic waste ever created by humans. I don't believe it. They don't say ever created by human activity. 80% of all plastic waste ever created by humans is still in the environment today. Thank you for some facts. Uh, this is the BBC 
asking the question, what has Earth Day achieved? Uh, then it, it sounds kind of like, uh, they, uh, of course, they don't, Oh, right, Earth Day. Earth Day was symbolically chosen for the official signing of the landmark Paris Climate Accord. There you go. That's uh, all right. What do critics say about Earth Day? Some critics warn that these achievements give a false sense of progress. Many environmental indicators from global temperatures to species extinctions are changing rapidly due to human activities. Efforts to date have fallen far short of halting, much less reversing these trends. Some individuals and corporations have also been accused of using Earth Day as an opportunity to misleadingly promote their environmental credentials without making the real changes that are needed. This is known as green washing. For example, Greta Thunberg, <coughs> Greta Thunberg <coughs> tweeted two years ago that Earth Day quote has turned into an opportunity for people in power to post their love for the planet while at the same time destroying it at maximum speed. And uh, Earth Day organizer, somebody Rogers, uh, quote, we all know green washing is happening and it is infuriating. We know Earth Day is used cynically by some businesses to misuse the ethos of sustainability for their own gain. Governments need to take robust action and crack down on any business or industry lying to consumers. Do you think so, considering uh, the government's uh, are in the pocket of the greenwashing? Uh, here's a hilarious article about how the, the choice between Donald Trump and Joe Biden uh, brings new stakes to Earth Day. Yes, but uh, we're going to close with a, uh, a quote actually uh, from 1988, I think. Uh, I think this was 1988 from my hero E.O. Wilson. Quote, soccer moms Soccer moms are the enemy of natural history and the full development of a child. <laughs> I've always liked EO. Um, get all, uh, they talk a lot about uh, EO Wilson. Uh, and you don't have time. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that quote about soccer moms uh, spoken, spoken facetiously during a speech, Wilson meant metaphorically that all of us, not just moms, but I would say mostly moms, uh, neglect to expose our kids to the natural world by dropping them off at soccer practice. Uh, the quip highlights a conundrum that undergirds the human condition circa Earth Day 2024, 
namely unlike in 1970 when the first Earth Day was celebrated, the problem, our problem, no longer is DDT killing eagles or the Chicago River spontaneously catching fire. Instead, our problem is us. Our problem is us as we whittle away generation by generation seemingly without thought or care our connections to nature there you go uh, so what are you going to do on this earth day buy an electric vehicle join a wild fire wildlife group ride a bike to work go for it yes but if you want to make a difference head to a lake shore a forest or a marsh and ditch your phone in the process you're going to ditch that phone brother importantly as if the world depends on it take a kid with you any kid and throw him in the lake and keep going until it becomes a habit. Obviously, I added one little half a sentence. <sighs> yes. Should we, should we take a kid and go throw him in an alligator-infested lake? I think uh, <laughs> that would be the best antidote to soccer moms. I wonder if E.O. Wilson would support... Uh, on this Earth Day, taking a kid to a nearby alligator infested lake and throwing him in it and make a habit of it. Anyway, but with that, I hope maybe we can find a kid to throw it in an alligator in that alligator infested sure. lake. But okay. we are going to. Uh, these old doomers here, I guess these, these climate change denying doomers are going to go have a margarita over the end times to celebrate Earth Day. Yes, I'm sorry. It is his collapsed trachea. Uh, we're going to get out there and Drink to Earth Day while we still can. Bye, guys. All right, another Earth Day rant.